That is his challenge. All right, we're going to see the next map is Cactus Valley, a choice by Sue. We are getting towards the end of the map pool, though. Definitely not one of his favorite maps for this matchup, but it is doable. What will Stats pull out against him, though? That's the big question. Stats already tried that double Stargate strat. Let's see what he goes with here as we now move into game number five. Sue versus Stats in the GSL Code S Finals. In the upper left, in the red, our Zerg player. He needs to engineer this comeback. The most important three games of his career fall. Yeah, that's right. Everything he knows about Zerg versus Protoss is going to have to be utilized. He may never get to another finals again. That is very true. In the bottom left, in the blue, he is. Splice stats. Stats, of course, yet to win a big tournament. This could be his night. But right now, Sue is really beginning to get momentum. Yeah, yeah. Like, if he wins this game, suddenly it's anyone's series three to two. Like, come on, you can win two games in a row. Especially when you already won two games in a row. <laughs> yeah. And I tell you, Sue is really due for a GSL championship. In fact, he's pretty much due for four of them. <laughs> Yeah. I would not mind watching him win the next four GSLs over a year and a half time span. I would not be complaining, Artosis. I think the most important thing to look for now is what kind of tech is uh, is Stats going to bring this game. I do not believe he will use a double Stargate build anymore in no. this series. No, I think that this is a really prime map for Sentry's Tasteless. Maybe some sort of a depth play with a big Sentry follow-up. There's a lot of skinny pads. You get in that little middle area, and man, it is easy to cut off the natural from the third. Bear in mind, we have not seen Sue actually survive in a depth push here from Stats without taking basically fatal damage. Yeah. If the game doesn't end, it's going to end in about four minutes later. See the CEOs of the two greatest the companies CEO on Earth. CEO Archon a right there. Freaking TV and Blizzard Entertainment. That's right. Those are literally the only companies that we need. <laughs> Well, maybe an electric company, an internet company. Yeah, yeah, we need we need an internet company. Not Comcast, so something else. <laughs> a Twilight Council is the tech choice now, so this is a very different game than what we saw in our previous game, game number four. Yeah. Will Sue be prepared? Of course, Sue is a player that's been adapting throughout the series as well. It's all these minor alterations in his build. How many drones versus attacking units is he getting? Where is he positioning this? Uh -huh. Where is he going to guess the adepts will try to shade in first? All this has to be factored in if he's going to hold this off and win this game. Yeah, and it's going to be even tougher because he's getting a robo with it, which means warp prism. So he's going to have glaived adepts. He's going to have the prism all over the place. And we don't know exactly how many gates he's going to go for next. This could just be a simple three gate, or you could even go all in with like a seven or eight gate here. But, uh, you know, if Sue can channel the adept defense he showed against SOS, he should hold it no problem. Yeah, I think you're right. We see that this is a, a, a bit more of a standard route that Stats is taking yeah. to this game. You know, this is a build we would expect to see. Uh, not even once, but maybe twice in, in a best of seven. He's getting that Warp Prism. We'll see how much he commits to this. The Warp Prism doesn't always mean a full-on push. Sometimes it's just a harass yeah. to see how much damage you can do, to see if you can keep the Zerg pinned back while Protoss tries to expand again and develop a more sophisticated army tech. Other times, this is really, you know, put the pedal to the metal. Let's go in here. Let's yeah. end this right here, right now. Can you handle my adept harass? Well, it's looking right now like it's just going to be the three gateways. That You can still make a lot of adepts off that, though. So. Critical damage could be dealt, but with that Roach Warren finishing right on time, a few extra queens out as well, Sue is looking good. This is kind of like what we saw against SOS. It looks like he should be prepared. Okay, the uh, Warp Prism is headed northbound right now. The big question is not just does Sue have the right units, but is he in the right position? 
We've already seen that Stats' adept game is very good. Wherever your army is, he is generally not. The first few adepts have come in. He has not warped it anymore. He's now shading over here to the yeah. upper right, backing the warp prism out. It looks like one. No, none of them have actually been taken out. He's now coming, splitting these adepts up. There are seven to eight oh. thrones now being picked off. Already a lot of damage being dealt out. 11 drones fall wow. just for adepts. Those adepts basically already paid for themselves. Yeah, and a second prism out on the map right now. Stats taking a third behind this, knowing he's keeping Sue too busy to really defend and attack at the same time. And really, uh, Stats can expand for free over here. If Sue tries to come down here and take out the space, there's going to be even less to defend against the onslaught of the Adept Harass. More Adepts are coming out. Let's see how uh, good Sue is at defending. Already two more drones have been killed, and that number does not appear to be slowing down. No, he's going to be able to take out this Adept. Six drones have died off. Another Prism flying around in the main base, but with a Queen and a Spore kind of flanking it, going to eventually be able to push this back. He continues to kill drones and make Immortals at home, which will do very well against the Roaches that are being made, but his overall army size is not really that big. Is Sue going to be able to do some sort of counterattack? You know, it, it seems to me like the game plan here for Stats is to get an operational third base, um, reap the benefits of that for the next few minutes, and then push out with a pretty sophisticated Protoss army, yeah. a backbone of Immortals and Sentries, along with a, a probably a big amount of Adepts and ideally shut down one of the bases here for Sue, yeah. then that will not come out of the game. The big question is, can Sue hang on? Well, so far he's lost a pretty fair amount of drones, unfortunately. Not that the probe count is really huge for stats. He's been spending a ton of money on this army, but look at how many sentries there are. That is a ridiculous amount of sentries. How is he going to hold on? Yeah, this is going to be tough. Can Sue do this? We've already seen this fail multiple times before. Right now, Sue is scrambling to get the necessary defense to take this on. He needs to get in position. Some Ravagers being made. He needs those corrosive Biles like never before. This is going to be a very tough hold for Sue. Moving as quickly as he can, getting ready. He's coming here now. The Ravagers are out. He's going to try to possibly take down some of these force fields. He does deny them. There's only a limited number of force fields on these sentries. It's important that Stats does enough damage in time. A couple good corrosive Biles do end up landing. Some of the sentries being taken out. Not that many force fields left over right now. Is Sue going to be able to break this? Still some Immortals have great lift up there by Stats. There may be too many Immortals back here. Eventually they're going to start dealing damage to these Ravagers. Oh, still some good micro coming out of both sides. More and more roaches coming up. But it looks like he's beginning to hold a bit. A ton of damage to that prison. Oh! The prison oh! He takes it out. It goes down. A huge pickoff right there. Still, though, Stats can be able to trade out pretty efficiently with the Immortal. But he has lost all of the sophistication in his army. And with no War Prism, this last Immortal will go down. And this game is now seesawed with a Zerg counterattack, making a beeline over to the third base. It's now up to Stats to try to deflect this. With this many Roaches and Ravagers, I don't know that he'll be able to. He has almost no sentries here, just a paltry four. The, the uh, Mothership Corps going to come out and try to poke it what it can, but Sue is on a rampage. He's coming in now. The Corrosive Biles have been shot out. The artillery is landing over here. Stats is frantically trying to warp in to buy some time. A lot of Biles still coming down. A ton of sentries and adepts being made by Stats. Kind of a desperation tactic. As the Roach Ravager count grows, this army is going to do worse and worse. The Mothership Corps slowly chipping away at this incredibly large army. Sue now dives in, hitting the sentries, hitting the adepts. We are about to get here to the jugular of the Protoss' base. If Stats can't hang on here, he will lose this game, and Sue will be one step closer to finishing up the comeback. So much damage being doled out, and Immortal coming down, getting anything it can. But look at the amount of Ravagers still left over. Sue rallying down at G. G, G. Wow! It's happening! Sue is actually beginning the comeback. He just has to win two more games. Bear in mind, Staff just has to win one. But we are at least beginning to see a glimpse of hope here from Sue. Well, I think.